This is Christina, founder and CEO of creatingdigitalassets.com, and in this video I'm going to give you just a couple pieces of advice if you are considering starting an online business that involves the creation and marketing of ebooks, um, audio programs, um, online courses, or private paid membership sites. Um, I'm going to assume that this is your first time doing this, and I'm also going to um, make the assumption that you're already working another job and you're looking to do this either on the side to supplement your income or potentially to um, replace, your, replace a job that you don't like um, and, and do this exclusively as a business. Um, now, a lot of people, uh, you know, there's different ways in which people go about this. Some people are so um, dissatisfied with their job that they've actually stayed in it and endured a bad situation for so long that the pain <laughs> of doing the same thing is now greater than the perceived pain of doing something new. And they just quit and jump into this um, 100%. Now, um, I, I'm not going to say that you can't be successful that way. However, if you're coming from um, decades of being an employee or, um, or if you're young and you don't have any entrepreneurial skill yet and you know, all you've ever had were jobs, it is going to require a completely different mindset, skill set, and how productive you are in any unit of time. So there's going to be some shifts and some adjustments that will need to be made in order for you to be successful. And that's why, um, that's why this is a journey and it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so um, if this is something that you want to do, um, what I, you know, I don't know if you're single or have a significant other, children or pets, but if you're working a job, you have to make the most of the time that you have. Um, they're paying you, so you need to give them 100% um, of your attention while you're there. But we all know that sometimes there's downtime in a job, or you could be doing um, your work, and you could be listening to something um, in your earbuds while you're um, doing, your, doing your work. So you can multitask. Not everybody can has the opportunity to do that so this is just based on whatever it is your job is but my my whole point is to find time to find pockets of time where you can um, advance your yourself so um, I guess the first thing would be in the mornings so you have a commute to work and you don't just want to sit in the car. You don't want to listen to the traffic report or the weather report or music or anything like that. I mean, you need to be using that time to listen to either podcasts in iTunes or an audiobook from Audible. So really, the portability that audio content offers you is going to be something that you're going to want to use and find and um make use of. And there are lots of great, great podcasts on iTunes. And um, if I were to recommend, I could recommend some of them to you. One of them would be Entrepreneur on Fire by John Lee Dumas. Another one is Social Media Marketing Made Easy by Amy Porterfield. Um, another one, another great one is Smart Passive Income with Pat Flynn. And um, Internet Business Mastery with Jason and Jeremy. Um, there's there's definitely a whole lot more, but I, I just want to give you a few to get started. And, and, and all of those have probably like 50 to 100 episodes queued up. These guys have been doing for a long time. So it, you can go in there and, and keep yourself occupied for like the next three months and learn a lot. So um, if you're in the car, on the subway, whatever it is, um, bicycling, whatever, um, in the mornings, you, you know, listen to something on your morning commute. And, and you know, you can also see the, um, the length of time that the podcast is. So, you know, 
how long you're going to be in the car. So pick something. If, you're, if it's a 30-minute commute, pick a 20 to 30-minute episode so you can hear it in its entirety um, as, you, as you drive to work. Okay, so then, you know, if there's any time during your workday where you can listen while you're doing other things, just have your iPhone with your earbuds and um, have something ready to listen to. Um, and then you have your lunch break, which you're going to eat either at your desk or, at, or out, or maybe in the park, or you go for a walk, or sit in your car, or take a ride around the block, I don't know, but something, but listen to something, use that time, um, don't go out to lunch with friends, don't work through lunch, don't, um, you really make the most of this time because, you know, there's not a lot of time in a day and we need to make use of it if we want something different, okay? So, um, and then there's after work. So, um, there's your commute home or maybe you go to the gym and you can get on some cardio equipment or even if you do weights, it's actually easier to listen when you do cardio because you're really, after you get the on the machine and you're going, you really don't need to focus. I mean, when you do weights, you need to focus on what you're doing and other people waiting around you. But, um, definitely when you do cardio, you can listen to, um, books or uh, audio books or a podcast. Um, and then in the evenings, you know, you can listen to something while you're cooking your meal. Just bring your iPad into the um, kitchen, and or it could be a YouTube video at this time, or or um, or your or your podcast or your audiobook, and play it while you're preparing your meal. And then you have the evenings too. So, um, that's the best way that I know to um, try to. Um, you know, shift your mindset and skill set and open your um, yourself up to other things that are possible by listening to other people's stories and, and, and the software that they're, they're using and the, and the journey that they've been on and, and um, the business models that they have in place and, and the income that they're making online and how they did it um, during that time. Now, of course, you're also going to need to focus on your own business and getting it started. So, one of the first things you want to think about is, you know, what this business is going to be and why you want to do it and what its name is going to be. So, I would go onto a domain name registrar and you know, brainstorm some domain names and see what the availability is of them. And um, stick with .com, it's premium real estate, it's premium, always premium uh, web property. And um, people have been buying and selling domains since, you know, the 90s, so um, yes, the market is such uh, exhausted, a lot of it's exhausted and saturated, and you may not find what you want, but... Um, you might. You never know. You have to be creative, and um, and sometimes if you find something, you might uh, it might be for sale. It might be parked. You know, someone might not be using it, and you could you could get it. You just never know. Um, particularly if it's parked and they haven't built it out, they might just be holding it. And um, you know, if it's not a top level domain, they might sell it to you for a couple hundred dollars. But anyway, my point is find a name that resonates with what you want your business to be like and also um, something that would be optimized for retrieval, which means that the search engines would find it, which means it would ha have, you'd have to do a little bit of keyword research and make sure that um, the string, you know, the stuff that people are entering into Google, is you know that is is relevant to what you, your your domain name is. Um, what I mean is, if you choose something that is like an obscure name, the burden of marketing is going to be on you to get everybody to, on the same page to find you, and you're going to have to do a lot of promotion. But you could pick up some organic search traffic if. If what you you name your domain is is like what it is that they're searching for, 
Um, more on that on another video. I'll actually go into depth on that on another video. But anyway, you want to choose a domain name for yourself. And as you're choosing it, and probably before you actually buy it, make sure that the same name is available on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube so that you can have a consistent presence across all customer touch points and all social media sites with that name. And um, yeah, so then once you've committed to that, then you want to think about your logo and um, you know the colors and the, that you want to convey and the feeling that you want to convey and the style and the font and all that kind of thing. Um, work with a graphic designer. This doesn't have to be expensive. This can be done on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot -R com. Or um, if you want to spend a little bit more and have a little bit more professional um, design and have like a um, crowdsourced project, you can do that on Crowdspring or 99designs where um, there'll be like several different people, maybe 20 to 30 people, um, will see your project and will submit um, entries and you can see a lot of different designs and choose the one you like the best. But, you know, if you know you don't pay anything unless you find something you like. And this can go on for a week or two. So um, you can do that on 99designs. That's where I got my logo for creating digital assets. It's like a tree that um, has icons for video, audio, and books, like all the different modalities. And um, it's a tree because it's like symbolizes growth and regener reg a, a regenerative energy and um, just infinite possibilities like bran the roots the roots grow down in the bottom and the branches grow out and just you know endless blossoms with, with sunshine and rain and nurturing and the tree just can grow and produce and um, there's abundance and um, it, it's just you know never ending you know it's it's very symbolic to me and it represents a lot it was not an arbitrary decision my logo I put a lot of thought into it and I want it to you know it's a global representation of my brand for a number of years I'm not going to change it um so for me it was a serious decision that I made once um paid a lot for and it's going to stay and it's I'm not going to change it um You've got to take your business seriously. You know, if you if you treat it like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. But if you take it on, you know, you need to take it on. You don't try it on. You take it on and um, you treat it serious from the very beginning. And people will see that you're committed and um, will feel that. And then everything else you do thereafter will fall into place. You're sending out that energy to yourself and to the world. So you have your domain name. You have um, your Facebook page, Twitter, and YouTube. And, and those would be like, there's too much to even say about all those. You need to build out all of those and optimize them. And they're all different platforms and they operate in different ways. And um, we can get into that. But just make sure that you at least reserve your name on each of those. And we will build them out later. So now the most important thing is list building. Okay. And you will need landing pages and marketing funnel and email service provider. <clears throat> And this is all very complex. We'll get into more of the details of it later. But you definitely need a way in which to capture um, email addresses for people that would be interested in what you're doing. And um, in exchange for their email address, in exchange for them um, identifying to you who they are and providing uh, personally identifying information and getting onto your list, you want to give them something of value and relevance for free, an immediate digital download of an ebook or a video uh, series, a video training series, something like that, where um, where really you can provide education and motivation and showcase your competence and your character and be a consistent presence in their life, in their inbox uh, for a couple of days so that you can build rapport and familiar familiarity 
and they can get a feel for you, especially if it's video. Um, you really can't hide who you are in video, so um, I highly recommend video, and I'm actually doing a lot more of it lately. Um, I've always procrastinated, but I am I made a commitment. I'm going to be on video more. I, people have said I'm, I have a nice smile. I have a nice voice that I should not, you know, delay anymore. So here I am. Um, so for landing pages, I highly recommend Clay Collins and Lead Pages. Um, that's the one that I use, and for for a variety of different reasons, this, it's um, really a great software platform. These pages are optimized for conversion. There's a lot of psychology that goes into the elements of the pages, and um, and also they're hosted um, on lead pages. So that company has. Um, analytics on the back end about conversions. So when they find something that works, they you know share that case study, they share the numbers, they share the um, the um, design and layout of the page and they, they share it with the community. So it's really, really cool. And um, kind of drag and drop, highly customizable, the things that are customizable and the things that aren't customizable don't worry about that because they're fixed for a reason. They're fixed because they work. They've been tested and proven. So um, they're optimized for social media. They're optimized for email capture. And um, so they're integrated with an email service provider. Um, if you're just starting, you might want to try MailChimp, Aweber, iContact. Um, I'm not that crazy about constant contact. I like Aweber to begin with, um, but you know, those are some that you can take a look at because you want to start building your list. Um, and in these programs, there are um, a way to set segment your list based on what they've responded to out on the internet so that you can tailor your follow-up communication and you can automate it and schedule it and um, send them a welcome email and be in communication with them. Now you don't, you know, it's a very delicate balance between how often you email them. You want to make sure that you respect your list. In fact, don't even think of them as a list. Everybody calls things traffic and list and conversions and all these like very mechanical technical terms. These are people. You're building relationships. You're not just building a list, you know, a list of names. Behind each name is a person with a dream, with a heart, with a mind, with aspirations, someone who's seeking education, someone who's seeking motivation. They're out there looking for something, and they've ended up in your ecosystem for some reason they think that you have something of value for them, so you don't want to let them down. So you want to be very conscious of your frequency and the quality of the email correspondence that you send because you don't want attrition on this list. You want to build um, relationships and you want this list to be responsive. Okay? And we'll talk more about that later, but this is direct response and this is very important. So, um, and in addition to that, you want to be thinking about what you want to create because the two skills of an entrepreneur are product creation and online marketing. So, um, whether that's going to be ebooks, um, it can be an audio program, it can be an online course, it can be a paid private membership site. It all depends on. Um, the experience that you want to architect for others and the life experience that you've had and you've accrued and the things that you want to share in what best way you think that the, you know, the, the modality and the delivery method would be for that how, or, or how your target audience prefers to consume content. So you want to kind of think about those things and be working on product creation. Now a lot of us procrastinate on our products and why? Because we want them to be perfect and we, you know, 
maybe we even start and they're just like overwhelmed. We don't know where to start. So one of the things um, that I learned from Brendan Burchard, um, the very first step in product creation is to block time and outline. Block time and outline. So what this means is you need to block time, a block of uninterrupted time. You need to schedule this. Schedule it in. Put it on your calendar, Google Calendar, iCal, whatever it is that you use, even if it's a paper, uh, at a glance from Office Depot, whatever you use, pen and paper, whatever it is, put it on a calendar because nothing happens unless it's scheduled. And this needs to be a time that is quiet and um, reserved for product creation. You don't necessarily have to go to the beach or the mountains and be alone, although sometimes people do that as a retreat. But, um, and I've often thought about doing product creation retreats for groups of people in beautiful tropical places, but um, that's another video. Um, let me know if you're interested in that, because it's been an idea I've been... Um, been thinking about but anyway you want to have quiet and what that means is you turn off everything no television no radio no cell phone no text no skype no facebook no twitter no youtube no internet no nothing's on vibrate um nothing's gonna buzz or <laughs> or alarm or ding or anything you have to be totally inaccessible on technology. All technology is turned off. All screens are turned off and dimmed and closed and everything. You really need to um, just be working on your product. And when I say outline, um, I use a tool online, a mind mapping tool called MindMeister. That's M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R dot com. It's free. And sort of drag and drop, and you can do whatever you want, and you can outline your product. But I know some people are old school, and sometimes we, even me, I like you need to see it all like like really right in front of you. Um, the thing the thing I like about the online tools, or is it's easy to edit and delete and move things around. But if you want to use post-it notes, if you want to use um, paper and pen or different colors of markers and or whiteboard with, you know, different marker, mark, dry erase colors. Use whatever you need to to get this thing outlined and think about um, how you want to structure it as far as the number of weeks that it's going to be or the number of modules and what's, in, and what's going to be in each of them and then um, what is going to be subordinate to each of those. So it's really time to get st structured and organized and... Um, Remember, you're creating, um, if it's an online course, you're creating a learning environment, a media-rich learning environment. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, you want it to be conducive to someone's mastery. You know, they want to learn. You want them to be successful. You want them to be successful in their own right, and you also would, you know, would love them to, you know, be able to provide a video testimonial for you. You want to see their success. It's so rewarding. So you need to think about this up front and early and, 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 and um, create things with their mastery and their success in mind because their success is your success. Um, particularly if it's an online course and if it's something that's progressive, you know, start off with easy things first and then intermediate and then advanced. You don't want to overwhelm people. In fact, you might even want to drip your content and release it weekly so that they um, can learn, um, so you can pace their learning and um, they can have something to anticipate um, each week. Um, so... Do your course content, and then, you know, obviously this is going to be paid content once it's all finished and we and package it and um, all that, but um, in addition to that, you need to create free content and value in the marketplace so that people can, you know, experience you, you know, before they buy. You know, they want to know if, if they can trust you. They want to know if you're competent. They want to know your style, your personality, 
um, your experience, your the way you think, the way you come across, because different people resonate with different um, people, you know. So, um, and don't expect to appeal to everybody. Um, don't feel bad if you don't, because you know there's always this is there's eight billion people on the planet. There's no, there's just it's statistically impossible to think that everyone's going to like you or to resonate with your content, even if you put your heart into it and it's high quality and everything. Just um, be prepared that when you courageously step out here, that there are going to be um, there are going to be people that you know are negative. There are going to be people that say critical things. There's going to be people that are think you're charging too much or I don't know, just a whole lot of things I've seen online. But just um, understand that you need to come out and you need to provide free content. And that could be done um, via po podcast, you know, a weekly podcast. Some people do daily podcast. You can, you know, make YouTube videos. You can write blog posts. I'm actually, I actually prefer podcasts and videos because they're more um, intimate and um, kind of build the relation. They accelerate. Um, building a relationship and rapport with people because they can see you and they can hear your voice and um, and particularly podcasts because this, this you know you really get attention share with podcasts because it's not very often that anybody can you know I mean you're right in the earbuds too I mean like for 20 minutes 40 minutes 60 minute episode they're listening to you and um, after they discover you, you know, who knows when they're going to discover you. You might have like 30 episodes in there and they might listen to them all in the next few days. And they've just spent like three hours with you, unbeknownst to you, because you're off doing something else in your business or your life. So um, podcasts are pretty powerful. And of course, video. So, um, and of course, when you start off with video, you um, can create, you know, optionally, you can create additional assets from that. You can strip off the MP3 file. Like, you know, I'm making this video here. I can um, strip off the audio only and put that into iTunes if I wanted to. Or I could have this transcribed at a, um, at a um, place like, um, I forget the name at this very moment that does transcription online. It'll come to me. Transcribe this and use that as I um as like the raw material to edit for an ebook or maybe a blog post. So starting with video gives you a lot of options. Um so those are some tips and the free content serves as lead generation. So you know teach and inspire and Show um, sh show the world who you are, and um, and at the end of these podcasts or videos or blog posts, always have a call to action, to, and um, send people to that landing page that you were talking about earlier, so that they can get onto your list and through your automated system that um co that consummates in a sales page, video sales letter. Um, for your paid product. So always at the end of these, anything that you do for free, have a call to action, a singular, confident, assumptive call to action, and send them to your landing page and encourage them to um, go further, go deeper with you. So um, again, the skills are um, product creation, marketing, online marketing, lead generation with free content, list building with um, your landing page, an automated funnel that continues to give them value and eventually makes an offer for a paid product. All of these things are income producing activities. They're also um, high ROI activities, meaning that once you've created a piece of content and put it out there, it's pretty much... Um, education-based marketing because people can discover it anytime, anywhere, on any device, in any country and experience you. Like, you know, I'm making this video tonight. It's March 1st. 
you probably are not going to watch this tonight. You might discover it tomorrow or a couple of days from now or a couple of weeks or months from now or even a couple of years from now. Who knows? And um, that's called leverage, and that's why we do it. So I hope this video is helpful, and um, there's, there's certainly a lot more depth on each of these topics that I talked about, and I can go into that on additional videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will respond to you. And again, this is Christina. I am the founder and CEO of CreatingDigitalAssets.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Good night.